in the last stream we were working on kind of pushing through the different tiers of astral sorcery altar to allow us to make star infused iron blocks to go alongside our mana infused coal blocks that finally combined inside of the smeltery allowed us to make two blocks of steel these were required because in order to get the steel bee nectar block we need two blocks of steel two blocks of iron honeycomb and of course the requisite one bucket worth of honey now between streams i have gone ahead and kind of crafted down a lot of the honeycombs that we had a large number of in the system here i've also taken some of them out and put them into the vacuumulator so that they start getting processed through our centrifuge system because we were getting to a point where our chests were getting quite full between streams, I've also gone ahead and added two more rows to the bottom of our compact chests here. So they are now slightly bigger. And in fact, real quick, what I might do at the start of today's stream is just kind of push this to the max because we do have 503 iron, which I think is more than enough iron for what we're going to need in today's stream. And so I think we definitely now have what it takes to really push these chests to the max and give us as much space as is possible. So we put eight in there. How many can we fit in? That's the max width. So that was nine. Let me get another eight of these then for a nine in total. And we'll do the same thing on our other chest over here. Assuming that's the same width, which I think it is. And then from there, we can go, I think a little taller with the height. Although I don't think we can go quite as tall with the height as we can with the width. So that's the max. And there's the max. Okay, so we do have two extra. That's completely fine. These now almost have twice as much space as they did mere moments ago and should hopefully last us a little while longer. There are also more storage drawers we could probably do with getting. For example, we've got so many seeds in here taking up so many slots. It would almost certainly make more sense for us to get those into a storage drawer, but that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, let me grab a bucket of honey. Let me drop that in over here and let's quickly see if we can't get the steel B nectar block going so that we can start generating steel with our steel B. I say with our steel B, we actually don't have a steel B currently. For that, we're going to have to breed one of our iron bees with one of our coal bees. And thankfully, that just requires one iron and one coal, and that will get us the one coal bee. There's our steel B nectar block. You love to see it. Right now, it is dark, which means none of my bees are going to be out. But of course, as per usual, we can sleep to skip forward to the night. And then once we've got the steel bee going, I think what I want to work on next is trying to get towards our first apiary. The apiary is kind of like an upgraded hive. Right now we're using just like standard resourceful bees, beehives in order to get all of our resources. We've got a few tier twos and then we've got, uh, I think one tier three in there. And then we've got one tier four right at the back producing the marble. The apiary though is kind of a big upgrade from this. Instead of just placing it down and having the bees fly into it, this is a fairly large multi-block structure. You'll see it says it needs to be seven by six by seven with a hollow block. You also have to have the apiary in the wall. The benefit of the apiary though, and especially of the higher tier apiaries, because much like the regular hives, there are tier two, tier three, and tier four apiaries, is that they produce a lot more resources. Not only do they have higher hive time modifications, which means the bees spend even less time inside of the hive and even more time therefore producing combs, but as you get to the higher tiers, Instead of just getting combs, you start to get blocks of comb, which is where you can really crank up the amount of resources you generate. For example, here with the tier one apiary, you'll see that it says output type honeycomb, output quantities eight. Whereas if we upgrade to the tier four apiary, it says output type honeycomb blocks and output quantity eight. So every time it harvests, you get eight blocks of honeycomb as opposed to just eight honeycomb. And then you can process those blocks of honeycomb in the centrifuge to get even more resources. And so, to get there, the only thing that's really stopping us right now is the fact that we don't have a nether star. And so we wanna to work towards getting one. Now to do that, we could try for the starry bee, but I think the starry bee is only like findable in the world. I'm fairly certain that we can't get the starry bee spawn egg. We can't, and I think the starry bee might only spawn in the end. So I don't really think that's an option. I think if we want to get another star, we have to do it the old fashioned way and we have to kill a wither. Of course, to get a wither, we need saw sand, which thankfully we can make in abundance because we can just convert nether warp blocks into saw sand. On top of that, the slightly harder part is that we need to get at least three wither skeleton skulls per wither. 
So to get the Wither Skeleton Skulls, I think initially we are going to have to go and kill some Wither Skeletons and try and get the Skulls the Old Fashioned Way. Although once we have some, there is also a Wither Skeleton Bee. This isn't a bee that we can breed, but we can get a Wither Skeleton Bee Spawn Egg using the same block to item mutation that we saw in the last episode for getting Aquamarine and Rock Crystal. This time around, we can do it by having a Skeleton Bee fly over a Wither Skeleton Skull. The Skeleton Bee is another one. Now, let me bookmark this. The Skeleton Bee is another one that we can get via the spawning. This time, we would need a Slimy Bee going over a Skeleton Skull, and the Slimy Bee, I believe, we can get by breeding a Water Bee and a Dirt Bee. So this should be fairly doable. We have both of these bees, and then once we have the Slimy Bee, we can have that fly over a Skeleton Skull to get the Skeleton Bee Spawn Egg, and then we can have that Skeleton Bee fly over a Wither Skeleton Skull to get the Wither Skeleton Bee Spawn Egg, and then from there, we can use the Wither Skeleton Honeycombs to get basically an infinite number of Wither Skeleton Skulls, at which point, combined with our infinite amount of Soul Sand, we would just need an effective way to repeatedly kill the Wither in order to get essentially infinite Nether Stars. And so that's kind of the plan for today. We're gonna to try and make that happen. To do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do first. One of those things is that if we're gonna get the Skeleton Bee, we need to start by getting some Skeleton Skulls, and currently, we don't have any. And so I think it might not be a terrible idea for us to set up kind of a classic modded Minecraft mob farm to try and get some passive mob drops, including things like Ender Pearls without having to manually fight Endermen every time we want them. And so for that, thankfully we do have mob grinding utilities installed. This gives us access to the mob masher, which we can use as a mob grinder to kill all of the mobs that we spawn. We might also have vector plates, we do indeed. These are also pretty nifty in that they act as conveyor belts that mobs can still spawn on top of. And so we can set up a room somewhere where the mobs spawn, they get pushed by the vector plates into the mob mesher. And then if we were to get another one of these vacuumulators, we could then automatically collect all of the mob drops and put them into a chest. Although actually, I think the absorption hopper might be an even better option for the mob farm because this allows you to not only collect items, but as you can see in the tooltip here, it also allows you to collect XP orbs as well, which could be quite useful because we also, of course, have access to Cursed Earth in this pack as well. And for those who don't know, Cursed Earth is basically a block that encourages mobs to spawn faster than they normally would and really makes your mob farm is quite powerful. To get the Cursed Earth, we need to right click this rotten egg onto uh, just some grass or some dirt or some mycelium or some farmland. And that will create a five by five area of what this mod calls dreadful dirt, Cursed Earth, they're all the same thing. To get the rotten egg, we need to feed GM feed cursed to a chicken. And so this is where that experience I was talking about a second ago kind of comes into play because to get the GM feed cursed here, we need one of each mob drop, a bone, a spider eye, a rotten flesh, and a gunpowder. Thankfully, we actually have all of those just from mobs that we've been killing around the base. And of course, if we didn't, I believe there are a DNA spawn things for basically all of these. So we could go and get a, a DNA for whatever mob it is that we needed, or we could just set up a standard mob farm and, uh, and try and kill them that way. Either way, for us, the only thing that we're missing is four buckets of XP. That is where the singularity drain here comes into play. This thing is not too difficult to make, but it allows us to kind of pull all of the XP out of us. Right now we have nine levels and it stores that XP in liquid form that we can then pull out in bucket form. Now, the only thing that we're missing in terms of making this is I think the two eyes of Ender. We have iron bars, we have the hopper, we can make the singularity tank very easily. Ideally, we wouldn't do it with honey glass. Ideally, we'd use it with regular glass, which we do of course have, and I've been smelting more of it between streams because we keep using our clear glass, which is not ideal, but uh, the singularity tank is done. The only thing we're missing is two eyes of Ender, and for that, we just need two Ender pearls, which as we've seen previously, is just gonna be us getting two more Enderman DNA, or maybe even three or four more Enderman DNA, depending on how lucky we get, and killing those Endermen over in our mob spawner to hopefully get a couple of Ender Pearls. Thankfully, since the last time we did this, we have now added luck to our Iron Sword, and so it should be a little easier for us to get all of the Ender Pearls that we're gonna need. Real quick, before we go ahead and press play on the Enderman DNA here, I do think we now have what it takes to upgrade this Soul Fire. So currently we're getting 0.5x efficiency with the Soul Campfire. Uh, if we click right here, it's down here, efficiency 0.5x. I think we can get up to 1x efficiency, basically making things twice as fast by crafting one of these blue magma blocks 
For this, we just need one bucket of lava. And thanks to our setup previously, we now have, I think, over 200 buckets of lava. Sorry, over 300 buckets of lava inside of our jumbo tank. We also need four soul sand, which as we saw again, we can make from nether wall blocks. And then the only tricky part here is the magma blocks. For these, we need magma creams, which require blaze powder and slime. Blaze powder, we have in the form of blaze rods here. And then slime, we can actually make in block form using the jars, along with any kind of mushroom. I actually don't know if we have any mushrooms. Mushroom-wise, we can get mushrooms by dropping poppies into our mana pool. And as I have not showed yet, but between streams, I did make a little platform over here to reset up our Batania system, because in the last stream, we did end up moving most of it to make room for the astral sorcery setup. And so if we do this, that gets us a brown mushroom. To make this here, we are going to need four, eight, 12, 16 slime balls. So we're probably, whoops, going to want to get two mushrooms so that over here, we can hopefully get two blocks of slime. For that, we just need to use no temperature, which is perfect. We'll cancel that, uh, type in slime. And if we could get two blocks of this, start. Uh, I think I should be fine. I don't know how much. Oh, we got two buckets in there. Perfect. All right, that should get us two blocks of slime in about a minute, which we can then use to make the blue magma block and some soul sand and slime later. That should be everything that we need. Let's craft the blaze rods down into some blaze powder. And then we need 16 blaze powder and 16 slime balls to make 16 magma creams. From there, we can make four magma blocks and that should be everything to get the magma block. Nice. And just for continuity of nothing else, I'm gonna put the magma block down there. And finally, I'm gonna move this tempered glass jar down in line with the rest of the auto processing jars. Let's do this and let's do this. From there, we can also get rid of you and you. Perfect. That looks much cleaner. And now over in here, we should be able to make that aforementioned Enderman DNA. And now it's gonna be much faster than it was before. And of course, much faster going forward. Now the Twitch chat is suggesting that it might not be a terrible idea to kind of jump the gun a little bit here and go straight to the mob masher and use the mob masher to kill the Enderman that we're about to spawn because we can potentially get a lot more Ender Pearls from that, especially if we upgrade the mob masher with the maximum 10 mob masher looting upgrades. The mob masher itself here is really not too difficult. It's mostly a ton of iron and some diamonds. The iron is mostly in the form of swords here. We need, I think, I wanna say nine swords in order to make this work. So we'll do something like that. From there, we should be able to make two iron spikes, one and two. And from there, I think I should be everything for the mob masher. Nice. This does require a redstone signal. For now, we'll use a lever going forward, though I think we might use a block of redstone. And then in terms of the looting upgrades, these are also not too mad. We've got a fair amount of lapis. We've got a bunch of gold and redstone. And so really, it's gonna be a case here of getting 40 blue dye, which we can get, I guess, from the RGB honeycomb, although we don't really have that much of it. And we might need this in block form for a different kind of nectar block. So I'll hold on to that for now. And it's definitely gonna be much cheaper and easier for us to just do something like this and something like this. We'll then take 10 of those. Thankfully, these do stick. And that's really all we need to get going with this. So I'll take this. We are almost now on the fourth Enderman. I did get enough to make four of the Enderman here. And so now it's just a question of where we want to put this because somewhat awkwardly, we're gonna spawn the Enderman on top of this DNA spawner. And then we kind of need to get the Enderman onto the mob masher. So how do I do that? I might make this one wider like this, kind of have the uh, the mob masher down here like this. And uh, real quick, if I put my 10 upgrades in and I turn that on and I give this guy a quick nudge, we should hopefully, look at that. Got nine feathers and nine raw chicken from one chicken. That's the power of those looting upgrades. And so I'm kind of thinking we could do the same thing here with the Enderman. If we make this whole like internal area one wider, I'm hoping I can kind of hit the Enderman from this side, push it over into the mob masher, and that should hopefully kill the Enderman. One thing we can do to kind of make it a bit safer for us is we could also look at putting some sharpness upgrades into the mob masher as well. This basically increases the damage dealt by the mob masher, making it much more likely that the Enderman will die in one hit, as opposed to maybe taking damage and then teleporting away. For this, again, you can put a maximum of 10 in. And again, it is basically just a ton of iron. Here, we need to make, I guess, 40 iron swords. Although, again, even after that, how much iron do we have left? We've got 378. That should be fine. How many 
Did that get us? That got us five. Let me do the same thing again here. And then let's do this and this. Perfect. So now we have that and we still have 340 iron. Fantastic. And yeah, let me grab some cobblestone as well. We'll try and make this just a little bit bigger and see if we can't get a bunch of ender pearls from three, or I guess four endermen. Okay. One thing to bear in mind, you uh, don't want to touch this. The mob basher will uh, kill you, even though you're not a mob. So just bear that in mind. So if we do this, that's going to summon an enderman. If we give him a slight tap over that way, he should get killed. Oh, we should put in our sharpness upgrades. There we go. And that got us three ender pearls from one enderman. Let's do the same again. This time he should die, I think, instantaneously. Nice. That got us four ender pearls. And then one more time, that got us loads, like nine. That's a staggering number of ender pearls. So from three endermen, we got 16 ender pearls, which I think definitely makes that a resounding success. And so now back over here, we were doing that all in the interest of getting the singularity drain tank. And so here we need two eyes of ender, which again, just more blaze rods. Thankfully, we've got quite a few of those now. Let's do two of these, one, two, and then let's get the drain. And I'm really hoping that we have enough XP to get four buckets worth which I think we definitely do. You'll see we're at two buckets, almost at three buckets, and hopefully, oh, not quite. We've got 3,660. That is enough for three buckets here, but not quite enough for the fourth bucket. That is fine. What we can do is we can go ahead and take our Enderman DNA here again. We can go and kill yet another Enderman. It looks like we did get a little bit of XP, even for the Mob Masher killing the Enderman for us. And so I think really all we're gonna want to do here is, uh, is just kill a few more mobs to try and push us over to the 4,000 millibucket mark, at which point we can use those four buckets to get the GM chicken feed. Okay, so I killed two more blazers. We had two blaze DNA in our system, and now I think we have everything we need. Cool, so let's craft the GM at chicken feed, and then now we need to find a chicken. I see one over there, I also see one over here. This one's gonna be a much easier for us to feed. Do be careful, uh, if you do use this, the uh, chicken may not survive the encounter. Fantastic, look at that, we got ourselves a rotten egg. Nice. And so now, all we need to do is figure out where we're gonna put this mob farm. Again, the rotten egg will transform a five by five area, and so if you want a bigger mob farm, you're going to need more dirt, and you're also going to need a second rotten egg, I don't really think it's necessary though, especially with the looting upgrades from the mob masher. I think we're going to get a ton of mob drops just from a five by five area, which of course is just 25 dirt. And so real quick, we're gonna go set up a mob farm. I actually don't think it really matters where we put it. I might put it in this box right here. Alternatively, we could put it quite far away, but I think we do want to import all the items into storage drawers. And so we'll set up a platform, we'll set up a little box and we'll probably also look at making some dark glass as well, which is uh, this stuff right here. Super easy to make. It's just black dye, color charcoal, and then black glass, which of course also super easy to make, especially given that we can get as much black dye as we like via the mystical black petal. Okay, so I've decided to build these in a somewhat awkward position, but I've built the box at the back of the base. Uh, the reason for that is that I wanted to build two of these because I'm gonna use this area here for spawning and killing the wither later on down the line. And so over here, we have a five by five area of dirt, and then we've got all of the dark glass everywhere but the front for now. And we are gonna now make some vector plates so that once we do convert this, we can have all of the mobs kind of coalesce on the mob masher that we can either put in the corners or in the center of that room. And so in order to make the vector plates, we do need a little bit more in the way of slime balls. And so I did the same thing again. I went, I grabbed a dandelion, from our little bee area, converted it into a mushroom and then converted it into a block of slime. And so now over in here, in order to get vector plates, we just need sugar, slime, and blank plates. The blank plates here are more black dye with stone. And we do not have any stone, but thankfully we can once again do something like this to get a bunch of compressed stone. We can then do something like this to get a bunch of double compressed stone. And then we can do the same thing again to get a couple of triple compressed stone, which then we can smelt over in here, and thankfully it smelts pretty quickly. It is a little bit slower. If I uh, press U here, it takes 25 seconds, but if we look at the recipe for smelting just regular stone, this takes 10 seconds. And so it takes 2.5 times as long, but you get 729 times more stone smelted at once, which is pretty great. And so let's go ahead and uh, drop this in the system because we've got a ton of it now. 
And that should be everything we need for these vector plates. There are three different tiers of vector plates here. And I think 24 is actually the perfect amount, by the way. We don't need more than this. And so we should be able to do one of these. And if we quickly grab some sugar cane, we can craft that into sugar. And we can get ourselves our first 24 vector plates. Now, the faster vector plates here, or I should say the higher tier vector plates here, do go faster. And they're really not too difficult to make, actually. It's just an upgrade of iron nuggets and sugar both of which we have in abundance. And then the highest tier upgrade is just the same again with gold nuggets and sugar. And so I really don't think it's necessary, but given how cheap it is, I feel like we might as well go for it. And so now it's just a case of grabbing this mob masher, bringing it back and putting it all together. Real quick, somebody in the Twitch chat did point out that we have these slime saplings here. There's the ender slime sapling and the green heart sapling. I think both of these might provide slime, but so we got these from the seed ore. And I believe the idea here is if we go and plant these on grass, we can then grow a tree that is going to be made of slime. Let me give that a quick try. If I put this down and we sprint, oh, this doesn't grow. It says it can only grow on slimy dirt or grass. I think the same is true for this one. So we would need some kind of slimy dirt or grass. The chat is right. We do have slimy seeds in here as well, uh, which we can apparently use to make slimy dirt or slimy grass. So if I take this, I don't have the slimy dirt and grass is going to spread, but let's give this a try. If I right click this onto a piece of grass, that doesn't do anything. Uh, plant on dirt or slimy dirt to make slimy grass. Okay, so it might need to be dirt. In that case, let's fully get rid of that. I didn't mean to pick it up. And then let's grab some dirt, throw that down in the ground, and then do this. Perfect. From there, we can grow this. And hopefully, that's going to get us some slime. It does. Look at that. Nice. So that's definitely a little bit easier, I think, than going through the mushroom step. It does get you a little less, but of course we could really get uh, as much of this as we like, or at least as much of this earth slime grass as we can make with the seeds that we have. And that's definitely a slightly easier way of getting slime going forward. Anyway, now that we have that back over here, let's see about putting this all together. So we do also want to get the absorption hopper, this thing right here. For that, we need one more eye of ender, that's fine. And we also need another hopper with three obsidian, all of which we have. And the good news about where we've put our mob farm here is that we can probably just put this absorption hopper directly onto the draw controller. And then from there, we want to make sure that, so if I press F3 here, uh, this is us facing towards the west. It's about halfway down, uh, right about here. It says west underneath this steel B. And so if we come in here, on the west side, we want to click that until it says items. And so now any item that is dropped on the floor here will be collected by the absorption hopper, held in the input buffer, and then placed directly into the storage drawers. For example, if I take a stack of redstone blocks here, we can then go and drop those on the floor and they're instantly put back into the system. I say instantly, it does take a little bit of time, but that is fine. And so, yeah, let me go ahead and throw down most of this here. I think what we'll do is we'll put the mob masher down right about here. For that, I do want to get a block of redstone actually. So let's do something like this. We'll put the mob masher on top of it and we will put the upgrades in. I'm gonna hold off on putting the uh, sharpness upgrade in just yet because uh, I do not want to die if I touch the mob masher and with all 10 upgrades in, I would die instantaneously. You do wanna make sure it is very dark in here. If it's not very dark in here, if there's any uh, natural light, like if the sunlight gets in, it will destroy your dreadful dirt, AKA your cursed earth, which is not what you want. All we want to do is take our vector plates and put those down in such a way that all of the vector plates point towards the mob masher. Now, if you don't shift, you will get pushed by the vector plate, right? So uh, if I did, I let go there, it'll push me, whoops, into the mob masher. That's why I didn't put all of my uh, sharpness upgrades in. If you hold shift, you won't get attacked by the mob masher. And so what we want to do here is we want to break this very centerpiece of vector plate and we want to right click our rotten egg onto that centerpiece. That's gonna transform the area around it into dreadful dirt. Again, it does a five by five area centered on the block that you use. So you want to do it right about here. I'm then gonna instantly place this back down and I'm gonna very quickly do something like this. And now you'll see that very quickly, mobs start to spawn and they start to get killed by the mob masher. Of course, I do want to go ahead and put in my sharpness upgrades so that they die much faster. And all we need to do now is get some storage drawers for all of those drops so that the absorption hopper here can actually put these things somewhere. And so I think what I might do here, currently we've got just a bunch of compacting drawers. I don't think it's worth making compacting drawers for all of these. And so instead what I think we'll do is I think we will make some more trim 
and we'll use that trim to connect all of these drawers here to more drawers on the other side. I think what I'll do is kind of move these tinkers stations elsewhere. And just like we've got on the other side of the smeltery, I think we'll set up another set of drawers on this side of the smeltery to hold all of the mob drops and also to hold maybe things like seeds as well that don't necessarily require a compacting drawer. All right, so I've run some trim under the smeltery. We did have to go kind of the long way around here because there is a filtered link cable on the bottom of our drawer controller, but uh, this trim here connects to the pre-existing trim that we already had, and that runs all the way along across and over to this drawer here. And I've decided to go with these two by two drawers just because it gives us so many slots to use going forward. So if we wanted to add more stuff here, it's not gonna be that difficult for us to do so. For example, we can go ahead and give one of these drawers to seeds, that's completely fine. We could give one of these drops to samplings. That's also fine. We could even potentially start putting some rogue combs in here as well if we end up with too many and they're really starting to clog up our system. But we've now got a ton of space on this wall. And the majority of the drops that we want to keep are being sent through. The only problem we now run into is all of the stuff we don't want to keep. For example, all of these different mob heads I don't think are necessary. Broken bows, not really useful and all the different arrows that we're gonna get, like the arrow of harming and the arrow of poison, also don't think those are particularly necessary either. And so I think what we're probably going to want to do is get another modular router and kind of filter that to pull all of the stuff that we don't want and send it around into a trash can. The trash can, as the name suggests, will just delete any item that is placed into it. Uh, we do have enough oak, thankfully, to make another trash can here. And then let's do one of these. And so, Essentially, if you put this down, anything that gets put in here, for example, an egg, is just destroyed, instantly deleted, which is good. You can also get fluid trash cans, energy trash cans, and then ultimate trash cans that can void all three. So for us, I think what we're going to want to do is kind of place this down, maybe right about here, and then we can probably place the modular router right in the center. The reason that's useful is that the sender and polar modules are pretty cheap, it only gets a little expensive once you want to move up to the Mark II. Even then though, now that we have a ton more enderpearls, we've got 144 of them already. Also, we've got 353 slime balls, so probably don't need to worry about the samplings, but uh, these are actually fairly straightforward. So if we get another piston, or at least a few pistons maybe, we can make ourselves a sticky piston, and then we can use that to make the polar module. That's going to allow us to pull certain items from the absorption hopper. Here, we want to either blacklist or whitelist. So I think what we wanna do, we wanna take a mob head and in here, there are a bunch of options like ignore MBT, match any, tag matching disabled, match item disabled. So we want to make this a whitelist because we only want to pull the things that are listed. And we want to ignore NBT. I think that's fine. If I do this and I do this, is that gonna pull from, oh, and I have to specify, of course, I have to specify the right like that. So if I put this in, that pulls a head. If I take a head out, it pulls a different head. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. And then from there, I think we can just make a sender module. Again, fairly straightforward. Uh, we can set this to left. Here we can just leave this as everything because we don't mind what it sends. We just want it to send what's in the buffer to the left, in this case, to the trash can. The only problem we might run into is if this also pulls mob heads, but I don't think it's going to. I think it's only gonna pull player heads. Uh, we can also do the same for bows here. We can go and add those to the polar module. So in here, we'll just go ahead and add bows and we want to ignore item damage. We want it to pull any bow, no matter how damaged it is, and dump it into the trash. And then finally, the same with the arrow heads here. If I do this and this, there's a possibility that doing that might also destroy like regular Minecraft arrows. But for the most part, I think that's fine. We do have a draw for arrows over here. It is uh, right at the bottom. But if we don't get any more arrows, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. They're not too difficult to make. I think for the most part, that's gonna be fine. The only problem we run into now is storage, I think, because it looks like already we have filled up some of our drawers here. We've filled up on Rotten Flesh because each one of these slots only holds 512. And when I say each slot only holds 512, what I really mean is that each slot can hold eight stacks of a given item. And unfortunately, because enderpearls only stack in sets of 16, that means that you get 128 enderpearls per slot as opposed to the normal 512. Thankfully, we can make some upgrades here to make the draw space bigger. There are tier one, all the way up to tier five upgrades. For us, the highest we can make is tier four because we don't quite yet have access to enderpearls. And I think this is probably worth making. If we make some of these, each one of these you put in increases the base value 
by 16 times. And so instead of being able to hold 128 ender pearls, we'll now be able to hold 2048. And instead of being able to hold uh, 512 rotten flesh, we'll now be able to hold over 8,000 rotten flesh. We could even put another one of those in. It doesn't multiply twice, as in you don't get 16 times 8,000 rotten flesh. You just get another like 7,500. It basically adds the same amount of space again. And so now we should be able to hold approximately 16,000 rotten flesh and approximately 4,000 ender pearls. Of course, eventually we're still gonna run into a problem where this does fill up. And that is where the void upgrade that we talked about in the last episode comes into play. We set up the obsidian, but we didn't actually get any of the void upgrades. The void upgrades here, we were talking about putting one in over here for the cobblestone. These are gonna delete any excess items that are made. And uh, you'll know you have a void upgrade in when you see that little icon. But now, once this is full, any excess cobblestone that maybe comes in through here or that we put into the system should just get deleted, which I think is perfect. Uh, the same is true for all of these as well. We could probably do with putting void upgrades in a lot of these, especially in the draws that are coming from the mob farm because they're coming in just so much faster than the drops from the honeycombs. And so for draws like this, I think it is definitely well worth putting those void upgrades in just so that nothing gets clogged up and just so we don't end up with stuff clogging up on the floor, causing lag. Now, as we said a second ago, the whole point of this system is to get skeleton skulls. And if we're gonna do that, we need to get the beheading upgrades, which you guessed it, just like the looting upgrades and just like the sharpness upgrades, are fairly easy to make and you can put up to 10 of them in. To make this, we would need 20 gold helmets, which should be pretty straightforward here. And then we also need 20 iron helmets as well. How many gold helmets did I get there? I got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then we do have one there. I'm not quite sure why that didn't stack, but that's fine. Let's do this. We'll do the same again. That's gonna get us a bunch of iron helmets. I'm assuming we've got 14, yep. And then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, 20, I'm not quite sure why that one's there as well. Let me see if we have enough. We do, cool. And so we'll go put this in and that should give us a bunch of mob heads from basically any and all mobs that produce mob heads. So let's do this and this. There are more drops that we've yet to get. And the good news is it looks like the heads are not being pulled by the router, which is good. I didn't think it would, but we already have one skeleton skull, which is perfect. Over here, we can add draw space for our zombie head, let's put that here, and our skeleton head, we'll put that down here, cool. And again, we're gonna wanna get void upgrades for both of those, we're also gonna start getting enemy heads and creeper heads and all that kind of stuff as they come through, we can start adding those to their own draw as well. But now that we have that, we should be able to start looking at getting this skeleton bee spawn egg, we just need that slimy bee, which was the dirt bee and the water bee, both of which I think we have. We might actually not have a dirt bee, but if we don't, it's pretty easy to make. It is just more clay, which we can of course craft down from our blocks of clay into BDNA, BDNA of course, into dirt B, assuming we have five dirt, which we don't, but we do have some coarse dirt and we have a hoe. And so we should be able to very quickly get something like this, something like this, something like this. And there's the five dirt that we need in order to make our uh, dirt B. Okay, so one dirt B later, we can replace down our DNA spawner, get ourselves a dirt bee, release the water bee, and then to breed these guys, we just need one leaf and one piece of dirt. Do we have a single piece of dirt? We do, however, we only have two left and we do need two in order to make more coarse dirt. So I feel like we should probably quickly do something like this and like this, just so that we always have enough dirt left to make more coarse dirt. Worst case scenario, I imagine we could use our dirt bee here to get even more dirt going forward, but. Now that we have extra dirt, we can do this and this. And of course, using our bee box, we should be able to very quickly get our slime bee. Whoops, not the marble bee, our slime bee. And we should now be able to use that slime bee to hopefully get ourselves the skeleton bee spawn egg. Now to do that, of course, we are going to need what I assume is a slime bee nectar block. Oh no, I see, it's a slimy bee nectar block, sure. So this requires two slime blocks and two water honeycomb with a thousand millibuckets of honey. So we're gonna have to get some water honeycomb the water bee here pollinates on actual water. Okay, fine. That isn't too big of an issue. And we should be able to make it work over here. I think we can probably get more water bees to make that happen pretty quickly. What I would like to do here maybe is kind of have the water in the ground, but we also don't want the bees escaping. So I'll do one of these. Hopefully that water bee can, uh, can pollinate and can get us some water honeycombs. While we wait for that, um, I can now go ahead and get rid of the diorite here. We don't need this. 
And it is annoying me a little bit that the subsidian is still here. And so one thing that we can do whilst we wait uh, is uh, we can also do a shearing this, by the way, which we should definitely do. My shears did just break, acquiring the leaves right here so that we could breed that water bee. But uh, real quick, let me get another set of shears. And let me also get a diamond that we can place onto our pickaxe to increase its mining level to be high enough to actually break the obsidian. So let's take these. That's going to get us a ton of diorite. That's all good. And then back over here, what we should finally be able to do, something the Twitch chat has been uh, asking me to do for a while, is take our pickaxe, give it a diamond head, and you'll see that uses up one of our upgrade slots, but it massively increases the durability from 104 up to 604. It also increases the mining speed from 4.4 to 5.4. And most importantly, it increases the mining level from stone to diamond. And so we can take this and we should now be able to use it to break this obsidian, just like we would with a regular diamond pickaxe. It is still gonna take a little bit of time, but it's gonna take way less than I think the standard 20 minutes that it takes to break a piece of obsidian without a diamond pick. Nice. On top of that, I think what I might do as well, whilst I'm kind of waiting for these water combs to come in, I might also look at uh, upgrading both my pickaxe and my axe here to better materials. Iron would be the most obvious, but if we look at uh, the pickaxe head, there are quite a few pickaxe heads here that we can make, a lot of them being alloys that we can make. For example, rose gold is an alloy we can make, and it's kind of just about finding the uh, the best one for us. I want a good combination of durability and mining speed. The attack damage doesn't really matter too much for me. Okay, so I've decided to go with bronze here, which is super easy to make. You just put uh, three copper and one tin into the smeltery. That gets you four ingots worth of bronze, which is the perfect amount to make both a pickaxe head and also an axe head as well. We do still have our blank sand casts here, so I'm still using those. Boom, boom and boom, perfect. That's gonna allow us to upgrade, and it's pretty good. It has a, uh, a mining speed of 7.5. The good news as well is that, of course, all of the modifiers carry over here, and you'll see that just by swapping this over, again, we go from 604 durability up to 1,108. Again, just moments ago, we were at 104 total, so now our durability is much higher. Uh, we can also do the same thing here as well, by the way, with the hatchet. Of course, the hatchet's mining level doesn't really matter, but the hatchet's Speed and durability can all be increased by adding a diamond to it. We go from 760 up to 1260, and we go from mining speed seven up to eight. So these are now both faster and have much more durability than they did previously. And so going forward, it's just gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier, especially when we end up chopping down a bunch of trees because those botany pots are so slow. Before our ax would not last long at all, it would break very quickly. Now, if we wanna cut all of this down, it barely takes a dent off our ax, which is, Cool. It does also mean that we're going to have to use bronze to repair our X going forward. Not a problem, though. We can, again, put copper and tin back in here, pull it out in either ingot or block form, and then put the ingots into the tinker station, just like we did with the cobblestone. Also, real quick, one thing that the Twitch chat is recommending, which I think is a good idea, is going to be for us to get a few more... Whoops, I don't want to use my dark glass here. I want to use my regular glass. The game seems to love using any glass that's not regular glass. But uh, if we get four more of these, we can make another one of the jumbo tanks here. And that jumbo tank is going to allow us to start storing all of the XP that we're getting from our absorption hopper. So if I put that here, uh, this side is us facing south. And so in here, we want to change south to fluid. And that's gonna start storing all of that liquid XP inside the jumbo tank, which we can then use later on down the line. Much like we did with the drain over here, the drain allows us to take XP out, but there's also an XP tap that we can make that kind of does the opposite. This allows us to pull the XP out of something like the drain, and then we can use that to give ourselves levels if we wanted to do any kind of enchanting or anything like that, which is perfect. It means we can kind of take this. We no longer need the singularity tank. We can get rid of that, put you back in over here, and we can just go put this XP tap over onto the side of the jumbo tank over here. And going forward, if we ever want XP, we can just come over and get the XP. And if we need it in liquid form, we can just take it out with buckets. Cool. Okay, so we're still waiting on the uh, water combs here. We need 18 in total. We've got five right now. I have got even more water bees in here. They're uh, super easy to get because it's just two leaves that you give to two bees, like this and like this. That gets you an extra water bee. And then of course, using the bee box, you can just pick that up, put it right back down. And so long as you get the right bee, like that, we can uh, get more water. Cool. So we're still waiting for that to come in. Whilst we wait for that, we can go all the way back to the beginning of the episode because we still don't have that steel bee. And so let me quickly grab 
a, a B jar so we can capture the steel bee. I've got one iron and one coal here. And so we need to grab our coal bee who is around in here, ideally before he goes into the, the hive. In that case, let me do the opposite. Let me grab an iron bee and we'll take him to the coal bee and then we'll breed those two together. And then I think I'll probably end up putting the steel comb in here for now. Again, eventually we're gonna wanna upgrade this. We're gonna wanna get uh, either more space or just move straight to the apiaries so that we can uh, fit more bees in and also fit in more nectar blocks and stuff. But for now, we'll breed these two together. We'll get the steel bee. And then after that, if we're eventually gonna try and get the wither bee, which is kind of the end goal here. The wither bee is of course, oops, one second. Let me do this. Let's do this and let's do this. There we go. That's gonna get us our steel bee, hopefully. It is perfect. Let's uh, pick him up, put him down. Uh, whoops, I've got to do that with the bee box. Pick him up, put him down, uh, put him down. There we go. I really do wish they came out in the right order with the other uh, bee box, but alas, they do not. That's fine. But if we're going to get the wither bee, we are going to need to get a few other bees going before then. So the wither bee here is made by breeding together the wither skeleton bee and the nether bee. The nether bee, we do already have. However, we don't currently actually have it working. So that is something we're gonna to need to do, I think, because what do we need for the wither skeleton B nectar block? Here we need skeleton comb and we need wither skeleton skulls. That should be fine, actually. And then as far as the wither bee goes, this requires a wither bee nectar block. This requires two wither roses and two blocks of nether stars. Okay, so this is why I wanna set up an area where we can try and actually automate the uh, killing of the wither. Uh, if not automate, at least do it in a way that's somewhat easy to do. I think we'll maybe look at doing that with industrial foregoing, which I think is what we'll work on next time. We'll see about getting the mob crusher to, uh, to auto kill the wither so that we don't really have to fight it too much. Uh, but with that, I actually think we're pretty good then on, in terms of getting um, other bees. One thing we could probably look to doing is figuring out what the skeleton bee here uses for nectar, because of course we need to use the skeleton bee to get that with a skeleton bee spawn egg. And so for the skeleton bee nectar block, we just need two bone blocks and two slimy honeycomb, I see. And so I guess once we've got the uh, slimy nectar block, we can use that to start getting some slimy honeycombs. Once we've got 18 slimy honeycombs, we can make the skeleton bee honeycomb and we can start getting the wither skeleton bee spawn eggs. Of course, for that, we are gonna have to first get some wither skeleton skulls, which means I believe heading through to the nether, because I'm fairly certain that in this pack, whilst the nether isn't a full regular nether, I do believe that nether fortresses are still a thing. And in fact, we can take a look and see if we have gotten potentially a little bit lucky here, if we grab a flint and steel, we'll build ourselves a nether portal. But now I'm gonna put it down just right at the end of the platform here. I'm gonna build it slightly wider than I normally would, just because I want it to be symmetrical here. We'll go one, two, three, and then the fourth one there is the top. We'll bring this over and we'll do the same here. One, two, three, and then the top. Let's see if we can't head through. And let's see if we're not somewhat close to a nether fortress. If we are, <laughs> well, okay. It turns out that we are pretty lucky in that regard. That is very helpful. Um, ideally, we don't want to die to any blazes here, but, oh, we did die. Luckily, we died <laughs> back at our base. That's good news, actually. That's tremendously good news because it means that we don't really have to uh, to try that hard to find wither skeletons. I was a little concerned that it might involve us trying to like uh, fly around for a little while, and I was gonna look at making a jetpack. We can still make a jetpack, and I think it would still be useful for times like this when we need to climb up. It would be easier if I could just, you know, use a jetpack to fly up. And so I do think that uh, in the next episode, we'll probably look at uh, getting a jetpack either way, but for the most part, we just need to figure out a way to get wither skeleton skulls fairly easily. There are a few options, I think. The easiest for us might just be putting beheading onto our sword. Uh, beheading in the new versions of Tinkers might be called something else. It's called decapitating. It's called severing, this one right here. And it does require necrotic bones to make some TNT, some copper. The necrotic bones, of course, dropped by with the skeletons. The Twitch chat is also right here that the cleaver does come with severing by default. And so I guess we'll potentially look at getting ourselves a cleaver. You'll see this comes with severing too. And so just having this by default, if we kill a wither skeleton with it, we're more likely to get that mob head. All right, so not too long later, we now have 24 water combs. And so let's do something like this, get two of these. We also, of course, now have a ton of slime balls. So we'll also get two of those. And as per usual, we should be able to use our bottles of honey to get more 
Putting. Perfect. All right. So back over here, let's cancel that. We are after the slimy B nectar block. This one right here. Boom. Boom. And boom. Start. Once that's done, we're going to take our slimy B, which is hiding somewhere inside of our B box, along with a myriad marble bees. And we're going to take this along with at least one skeleton skull. Although maybe we'll take two. And we're going to place those over into here. I've taken the marble bees out and I've also gotten rid of the marble nectar block. We're going to do this and this. And then just like before, we now just need to find our slimy bee. Get rid of all the marble bees. And as soon as he's pollinated on that, he should fly over the skeleton skulls. And just like in the last episode, we should see those transform into skeleton bee spawn eggs, which we can then of course use for skeleton bees. And then from there, it's just a case of getting enough of the uh, slimy, look at that, perfect. Uh, getting enough of the slimy honeycomb so that we can make the skeleton bee nectar block. This one right here, because of course, if we're going to transform with the skeleton skulls into with the skeleton bee spawn eggs, we need the regular skeleton bee to be able to pollinate on something, hence the need for 18 slimy honeycomb blocks. And so between streams, I'll go ahead and harvest this beehive a few more times so that hopefully next time when we come back, we can get that uh, skeleton bee nectar block up and running. Of course, also next time we'll look at getting that uh, cleaver and also some armor so that we don't die instantly as soon as we go to the nether. But uh, we'll get that cleaver, we'll get the armor, we'll go and we'll fight some wither skeletons to try and get some wither skeleton skulls. We'll get the wither skeleton bee going hopefully. And then we'll also look at getting a wither up and running as well. That wither is going to allow us to hopefully get nether stars and nether star is going to unlock the apiary for us as well. But that is all a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there.